Hi everybody, it is February 18, 2019. Oh boy, this year is going fast. Okay, so I posted a video recently on South Carolinians, uh, how they are being targeted by the police, the police using civil asset forfeiture laws to steal from them. The police in South Carolina are criminals. They are stealing from South Carolinians and boy, are they stealing quite a lot of cash, money, and property. Uh, South Carolina also has very bad, bad, bad um, domestic violence taking place here. And the sixth worst for domestic violence, homicides. Six out of 50. And yes, South Carolina, how are our schools here? Are they really the worst in the nation? This was April 2017. They were dead last. Very bottom. Mississippi, move on over. You're not the worst anymore. Now, that ranking may have gone up in 2018, but I can guarantee you it has not gone up very high. Animal cruelty here. Wow. It's bad. It's bad. So, if a state has basic problems that it does not seem to ever resolve, can't take care of its animals, education, unbelievably poor, uh, domestic violence, people killing one another, and the police stealing, from their residents. You'd think that South Carolinians would band together to try to resolve the basic problems, but instead what we have are people banding together to fight opposing groups on Drag Queen Story Hour. Now I'm not saying that one should not fight this, but there are so many problems in South Carolina that South Carolinians don't seem to care too much about. Now, am I talking about every South Carolinian? No, but I am talking about the majority. But are South Carolinians any different from any other resident in any other state? No. We've got a real problem with the American people, and if they do not do the work necessary to change their psyche and, well, to raise themselves up to see what really is going on. Now, the younger generations, they don't know any better. They think this is the United States. This is what they have always known. Crazy madness insanity. But there are an awful lot of older people at this protest going on here. Five Forks, a community in Greenville County, South Carolina. And there, yep, one side are the Christians, and boy, do they have a lot of hate spewed from them. Uh, and the other side are the Rainbow Coalition, I guess. And, well, they too. Uh, they, <laughs> with expressions of hate, scream for love. All right. What is missing out of all of this? The question, is this age appropriate for children? No, we know that. You know, and, and I'm beginning to think that only Christians or Satanists have a voice in this country. Everybody else, we're drowned out. You know, uh, if you're not a Christian, well, then you shouldn't be speaking about anything. I don't know. Um, well, I don't go along to get along. So I am speaking out. This is wrong for children, very wrong for children. Why is it taking place? Because there's a deliberate agenda, a deliberate agenda that has been going on for years. So many are talking about, but when they do talk about it with their fellow Americans, they get insulted, they get uh, made fun of, they get called conspiracy theorists, and well, unfortunately, 
That is the case for most Americans. They just don't want the truth. The truth, who cares about the truth? The truth upsets me. And knowing the truth, it might, oh, make me feel kind of bad. I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to feel bad. I want to feel good. So be positive and be hopeful and just tell me good news. Not Bible good news, but just good news. Give me good good, good news. I don't, I, I'm going to block out all of the negative. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. So I'm going to join with those who are about love because that's good. I, I, it, look, the abject insanity is really um, pretty frightening in terms of what is going on. But I want to show you a picture that tells all. And here it is. There are 48 pictures and this picture is the one I have voted the most telling. Here's your drag queen. Beard. This is a woman. The protests are going on and what? Maybe two is this boy two years old and that father thinks that it's appropriate to bring this two-year-old to this protest where you will see if you watch this video there's a lot of hate being spewed the, the, the two-year-old can't really, they don't have the cognitive capacity to understand the issue. What they see are a lot of adults who look scary. A lot of adults who have uh, body language and tones of voices and facial expressions that would scare any child when they can't understand what is happening. But this would scare any child. What is this? It's a, a man, woman, a woman, man. What is this? How could a father believe that this is appropriate to bring this young boy to? How is it possible? Because this man right here, this adult child man, has not grown up. He has no, I don't think, look, you know, <laughs> I want to go with freedom, but these parents, man, who screw up their children because they don't have the maturity, the wisdom to understand what good parenting involves. Perhaps they think it's good to bring a child to Drag Queen Story Hour at the local library walk them through all of these protests and sit them down to listen to a story read by this. Okay? Um, let's not focus on how bad the education is in South Carolina. Let's not focus on the fact that South Carolinians can't even protect an animal Let's not focus on all of the domestic violence and all of the homicide caused by domestic violence. Or the police stealing from South Carolinians. Yeah. Our mainstream media is going to bring to us all of this. So, why does this get all of the attention? where so many other things don't because this is a deliberate agenda to break you down, demoralize you, and get you to fight one another. And it is so, what upsets me so, how successful it is. Now, I have posted on this Many have posted on this, but you need to listen to Yuri Bezminov, who is an ex-KGB officer. He defected to the United States, and he has warned Americans, you're being taken over. Psychological warfare is being used against you, and it's been going on for decades. What he has to say is very, very important. Uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion. What do they mean by it? 
ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. All, all you have to do, all American mass media has to do, is to unplug their bananas from their ears, open up their eyes, and they can see it. There is no mystery. There is nothing to do with espionage. I know that espionage intelligence gathering looks more romantic. It sells more deodorants through the advertising, probably. That's why your Hollywood producers are so crazy about James Bond type of, of, of thrillers. But in reality, the main emphasis of the KGB is not in the area of intelligence at all. According to my uh, opinion and opinion of many defectors of my caliber, only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriyatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community and their country. And that is what we are seeing. No one is able to come to sensible conclusions to resolve anything and we're all just fighting one another and it just continues to go on and unless people really take a good look at what is taking place the deliberateness of it all all of these agendas the deliberateness of bringing in um, drag queens to read to children wow well you will get a whole lot of Americans fighting with one another, wrapped up in what is right, not for children. Because children don't seem to be uh, a part. Uh, the, the adults are fighting one another because one side believes they're right, the other side believes they're right, and they go at it, and they don't care too much about the children. If those two groups came together and really sat down and started discussing whether or not this is appropriate for, well, you, you, you saw <laughs> mothers bringing in infants to this, um, but also a two-year-old child, really? You think this is appropriate? Okay, forget about the moral issue of drag queen or uh, that they are immoral. Forget about everything, but just focus on this little boy's psyche, this little boy here who looks quite scared, doesn't understand what's going on. Focus on him, just him. Should he be brought to this? Is this appropriate for children? And I think any sensible human being would say no. Would say no. But you're all too wrapped up in trying to, you know, be right. Uh, you know, it's the social justice warriors. Mother arrested for calling a man a man. If we see that people are being arrested because they haven't uh, gotten with the program and called someone the pronoun of their preference, they're being arrested for this. Do you not see the deliberateness of this? A mother was arrested in front of her children and locked up for seven hours after referring to a transgender woman as a man online. Three officers detained Kate Scotttown at her home before quizzing her at a police station about an argument with an activist on Twitter over so-called dead naming. I don't even know what that is. A 38-year-old uh, from uh, in, in England had her photograph, DNA, and fingerprints taken and remains under investigation.
Do you really think that this is appropriate? <laughs> no, it is something has gone askew here, don't you think? Now, whether it's happening in Australia or the UK or the United States doesn't matter because this is taking place all over Western countries because Western country, their culture, their values, their tradition are all being destroyed for the purpose of bringing in a new world order where everyone is the same and everyone has the same equality, financial, um, social, everything is the same. Wow, what a boring world that will be, but people are being so easily manipulated to fall for all of this deliberate social engineering. And we've got to reach those who are being deliberately uh, socially engineered to somehow get them to start thinking just a little bit differently. More than two months after her arrest on December 1, she has not been given back her mobile phone, phone or laptop. She was served a court order that bans her from referring to her accuser as a man. Um, she states, I was arrested for harassment and malicious communications because I called someone out and misgendered them on Twitter. You know, when you, <laughs> look, we, we, we have biology, okay? And when a child is born, they are either boy or girl, okay? When you start messing around with the fundamental um, fundamentals of life and you actually get people to believe that there, that there aren't just two sexes, two genders, despite what someone else feels, then you have one hell of a screwed up society. If the social engineer, engineers can, can actually do this to people, something is very wrong with the people. And they have to take a look at themselves. And it's not hate. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is not hateful to say that, yes, there are two sexes, a boy or a girl. You've just been manipulated into thinking that it's hateful. And it doesn't say anything about that child, whether boy or girl, grows up to feel as if they are of the opposite sex to which they were born. That's a whole different issue. But when you get that tiny segment of the population that suddenly has become so powerful that now you can get arrested for stating or calling someone their actual biological gender when they prefer to be called the opposite gender, that means, no, it's not that small segment of the population that has just suddenly become so powerful. It is deliberate. It's deliberate. And it is driven by those behind the curtain. You know, all this occurring while actual crime explodes in Britain. All this occurring while you have the police out stealing from South Carolinians and you've got the education so poor, domestic violence, and you've got so many problems. But this is what's happening? Really? So, we've got a problem here. Apprehensions for hate speech online were up almost 900% in some areas since 2014, while police arresting nine people daily in the UK, and 867 were arrested in 2016 in London alone. And here are some more examples of 
uh, the police, you know, arresting a 74-year-old woman who was asked to stop. Well, she, I don't think she was arrested. She was contacted and asked to stop tweeting comments about transgender ideology. Uh, a docker in northern England was informed by the police that he would be the subject of a formal investigation for tweeting out a limerick about transgender people. Um, did we have free speech? I guess not. Okay. United States hate laws. Well, they're not quite in place yet. But now, you know, the, the, the stigma of not going along with the PC bullshit is enough to get people to just go along to get along because Americans really are not the brave and courageous. They are very seriously uh, mentally ill, <laughs> well adjusted to a deeply disturbed society doesn't mean you are well adjusted. It means that you are deeply disturbed. And we are, we are, we so desperately need approval from our social network that we do forfeit our own individuality for the greater good. <laughs> so in, in, in a sense, we are kind of, um, you know, uh, not individuals, but we've always had that kind of communitarian um, psyche. Perhaps not hundreds of years ago, but today, yes. So just being told that you're hateful is enough for Americans to shut up. And when you see these things, Wisconsin ordered to pay for gender reassignment surgeries. Really? Medicaid, your tax dollars, pay for gender reassignment surgeries in Wisconsin? Does that sound uh, like, uh, why should you have to pay for somebody's gender reassignment if that person doesn't feel that they are the sex that they were born, then they pay, right? Yeah, they should pay, not you. So don't you see how the deliberateness of all of this is in place? You have legislators now who are being ordered by a federal judge, by the way, um, to pay out. So something is very askew and you've got to take a step back and, and try to figure out what the hell is going on. You know, campus reform, I will recommend again that you bookmark campus reform and that you take a look at what is happening to our higher education. UCSF, U U uh, University of California, San Francisco, flaunts gender pronoun stickers for those not sure. Yes. Um, it's... Why? Okay. Do you get how crazy this is? They're offering gender pronoun stickers to help faculty and students determine the preferred gender pronouns for people they've just met. The university says the stickers will help those who are not sure of another's preferred gender program. Pro pronoun, sorry. Program, should I say? Yes. But, oh my God, if I call a he and that he wants to be called a she, Oh my God, I'm going to get, oh, well, silenced, silenced by the PC police. So now you can wear a sticker and make it easy for people so that they won't be uh, targeted as being hateful. If you take a look at these headlines, Yale students can now select from three gender options. This is higher education. Only women, transgenders, are allowed in George Washington debate tournament. 
kicking out men. What is going on? Better promote diversity inclusion if you want tenure. Professors have to include diversity in their on, on their syllabus, otherwise they will not get tenure. Deliberate. This is deliberate. So you have to ask what the hell is going on? Why? Why are they deliberately promoting all of this diversity and uh, transgenderism? Why? Ask yourself why? This is did, did this this did not erupt organically. It came out of the minds of the social engineers manipulating everybody, tossing everything upside down, which leaves you demoralized, unable to come to any conclusions, unless you go for the details, unless you do the research that is necessary to understand what is behind all of this. People don't like details. They just like Oh, I hear something, I agree with it, and that's it. So now uh, men are absolutely being targeted. Oh, your toxic masculinity. Masculinity is not toxic. <laughs> shit, shit. Oh, my God. So at, at, um, at the University of Missouri, all right. Men who, I don't even know how, how to look at this as if it's, this is serious. I mean, I mean, how can anybody say men who ask out smaller women could violate Title IX? Title the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Civil Rights and Title IX at the University of Missouri said that a man's physical size could constitute a Title IX violation. All right. Is something wrong here? Something's very wrong. Something is very wrong. And you got to ask yourself, what the hell is going on? So yes, of course, that Gillette ad toxic masculinity. Fortunately, uh, they had a lot of backlash, which is really good. But when you say <laughs> men who ask out women, who are smaller than them, it could be a violation of Title IX. You have, you have some seriously warped brains in higher education, but the younger generation, they don't have a frame of reference within their brain to understand what's going on. They just accept as true what people say in higher education. It's up to the older generations to put a stop to this. But our institutions, every one of our institutions has been infiltrated to break down Americans to the point where they're crazy, insane, cannot um, discern what's real, what's not, they can't, they're too demoralized to even make decisions based on their own best self-interest. They're done. This was back in the 80s, this interview, back in the 80s. It's 2019. So the madness that we are seeing now, well... It's been a madness that has been brewing for a long time. You know, you go and look at these videos Campus Reform has posted, and Campus Reform has a YouTube channel. Take a look at these videos, because every issue that students are asked about on their campuses, they are for socialism, they're for uh, this Green New Deal, but then when you ask them and point out what's in what's involved, the details of things. You see this video on Campus Reform's YouTube channel where 
Many of the students are um, asked questions or they say things like, all right, this is what Trump has said about uh, immigration. And they all state their opinion. And that opinion is not really their opinion. It is the opinion of the herd. And then in the same video, they're asked, well, did you know that Hillary Clinton said the same thing? Did you know that Chuck Schumer said the same thing? And they're all surprised. Really? Oh, oh, okay. So this Green Deal video, you know, they all are supporting the Green Deal because the programming, the, hey, get your 30-second uh, sound bite on something, and it sounds all good. But then when you know the details, they go, oh, well, no, I'm not really for that. No, I can't really agree with that. But they're not taught. They're not taught to examine carefully. Use your critical thinking. Go into that Green New Deal and really analyze it. Take a look at it. Take a look at the details. And you may have a very different opinion than the opinion that you have based on that 30 seconds. Grow up. Professor finds students delay adulthood. Guess what? We are so infantilized. And I would love for Americans to grow up. Just please grow up. Grow up. Really work on yourself to develop some maturity. You know, this is a boy boy bringing another boy into the world. This is not a man. This is not a man who's protecting his son. This is not a parent who knows how to parent. Sorry. But, you know, if I had a child, there's no way that I would bring my child to something that is so rife with hatred coming out of both sides, bringing him into something that is so drama-filled that it could traumatize my child. You just don't do that. Regardless of where you stand on the issue, you do not do that to children. So, yeah, now we don't even know what, uh, well, now I guess we, uh, we have more sexes, not just boy and girl. Really? Uh, what's adulthood? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we become adults when we're 35 or, or when we graduate college and we're, we can, you know, sustain um, a job and pay bills and we don't even understand. We don't even understand the difference between childhood and adulthood. And you can thank the social engineers for this. You can thank your universities and colleges. You can thank the older generations for doing this to the younger generations. The only way, the only way that we will ever get any sanity or even any hope of sanity as if every individual does the work necessary to become mature and to really become, stop thinking about your intellectual um, prowess and start thinking about wisdom. There's a very big difference between wisdom and intelligence. And if you don't have any wisdom, your intelligence could become dangerous because you won't be wise enough 
to use the knowledge that you have. I'm sick of this, guys. I'm really sick of the insanity, the idiocy, and I'll be making a change. All links are below.